Hey guys, Kamina the coach here. I am so happy to be here with you. Um, if you are empathic, you can probably sense a different kind of energy about me. I am a little manic these days, but that's what this video is about. I'm going to talk to you about um, preparing for reunion. So for those of you who don't know, I'm adopted. And so I've done DNA and I've got my first set of DNA back and I didn't do a video. I got that back last Friday and I didn't do a video about that and I really should have because it was the best, literally the best day of my life. And if you're not adopted, especially if you're not like transracially adopted and you kind of don't know who you are, it was the first time I, I knew anything for sure about myself. Like. I haven't, up until this point, I haven't even known my birthday. So anyways, so anyways, in, prepa in preparation for a reunion, excuse me, with my birth family, brought up a lot of stuff and an analogy I keep using is um, scraping the top off of a scar that I wasn't even really aware that I had. Um, People keep saying coming out of the fog, but I never really had a, a patriarchal view of adoption. I never bought into, I'm so lucky, but that's what we call it in the community is, is waking up to the horrors of adoption from the view of the adoptee and the birth parents or original parents. So what I'm going to talk about in this video is dealing with the original trauma and what you can expect to come up with this. So if you haven't taken the ACEs assessment, there's only 10 questions. And if you score like three or four out of 10, you probably have CPSD on top of everything else. So CPS, CP, PTSD kind of goes hand in hand with the primordial wound. Primordial wound is when you take a newborn away from their child. This um, kind of trauma that is pre-verbal that um, us adoptees can't really put our finger on, which ends up causing us a lot of problems in our life. Then if you add insult to entry, then if you end up with maybe um, a not a very aware family or a not a healthy family, then you add trauma on top of that. So the diagnosis is called CPSD, complex um, post-traumatic stress, stress syndrome and it's different and the, it's different from regular PTSD that people experience from going to war or being in car accidents or being horribly physically abused it's different in this that the symptoms are different and it presents itself self differently also a, a really a, a, a big problem is a lot of this uh, abuse potentially happened pre-verbal so we're not even able to remember it or put our fingers on it or possibly our little child brain was so sensitive that it or so resilient so strong that it blocked all that stuff out and we just don't remember it I don't remember the only thing I remember about my sexual abuse um, is that he took me in the closet and said don't tell mom and I don't remember what happened after that um, and I don't remember how many times it happened. And, and I'm sure that that's my child brain protecting me. And I fully expect all that stuff to be uncovered in my, my healing journey. So the thing is for me, um, and the first thing a lot of people tell you when you're getting into reunion is, oh, do you have a therapist? For me personally, and for a lot of sufferers of CPSD, um, talk therapy can re-wound a person and re-traumatize a person. I know for me personally, every time I left, left therapy, I've been in therapy twice, every time I left therapy, I felt worse. So I'm not taking anything away from talk therapy. I'm just saying a lot of sufferers of CPSD struggle with talk therapy, um, tr struggle with groups. Me personally, I've left my adoptee groups. Yes, I am a control freak, but also I don't like to relive the narrative over and over and over again. 
if an adoptee needs support, I'm always here for them. But to be in a group where I li relive the misery over and over again, it's, it's like being, for me, like being in talk therapy. So I am exploring um, some different ways. I'm, I'm exploring some body modalities that are aimed at helping um, retrain the brain and release the trauma that's stored in my body, even if I can't name it. So two amazing books that you will hear a lot of adoptee therapists talk about is Healing Trauma by Peter Levine and The Body Keeps the Score. I don't know his name. Um, the Body Keeps the Score, I just want to warn you, if you are still carrying a lot of triggers with you, if you still feel very sensitive, The Body Keeps the Score talks about a lot of trauma. So it's potential to be quite triggering if you are carrying a lot of tra trauma with you. So what am, am I doing? What have I changed in my life? So um, nightly, I am, as I fall asleep, I'm doing a meditation uh, to release um, trauma that's stored in the body. Um, about a year ago when I was living in Thailand, I, I tried TRE therapy. So that's actually shake therapy. So um, animals are humans. We are at the high end of the primates, but we're still, uh, we're humans, we're animals. So all animals, once they go through a trauma, once they are stimulated, they go through this like shaking phase. Um, if you've ever seen a startled dog or cat, they, you, maybe not an indoor animal, but definitely all outdoor. It, once they become, once they come indoors, they, they kind of lose their wild features. But as animals, we need to go through the whole process when we are activated, when our um, parasympathetic nervous system is activated. When we go into that fight, flight, freeze, or fawn mode, we have to go completely through the cycle. So why don't humans shake? Why don't we complete the cycle? Well, we've been conditioned not to. Excuse me. If something happened, if you were in a car wreck or something and you were shaking, Especially if there are children around, you know, you're they say, what's wrong? What's wrong? But kids actually do it when they're small. Babies do it. So the theory is, is that the trauma is not fully passing through us. So it is stored in our body. Um, EMDR is something I really want to try. But EMDR is really aimed at traumas that you can name. You talk through the trauma and somebody simulates tapping which simulates the REM sleep, the connecting of the, the two lobes of the brain, which also is supposed to be where in sleep you process trauma. So if you've been too traumatized, you don't get to process, you don't get to co complete that cycle. So um, this tapping therapy is supposed to help you walk, walk you through the trauma to help you complete it. Well, and what I like even better is Peter Levine, where he um, discusses you don't have to meet the trauma head on. You don't have to relive the trauma to complete the process. So what am I doing? I'm doing body awareness. So I'm doing that, that meditation at night to help me release the subconsciously release the trauma that I'm holding my body to bit by bit. And... Um, so the catch with that is it's a retraining and you have to do it every day. And I'm so motivated to make a change in my life. Also, I just want to say this. If you suffer from CPSD, you also probably suffer with crappy interpersonal relationships. Your life probably looks really good from the outside. Your job and career and you know, you take really good care of yourself. You might be physically, really physically fit, but you probably struggle in your interpersonal relationships. And that's because you have serious attachment issues. Probably you have some abandonment issues. So it makes it really difficult and probably some anger issues. So it makes it really difficult to make and maintain interpersonal relationships. So my, my intense desire for emotional relationship and connection 
um, has inspired me to do, I do this every night. So I do my meditation every night. I go to bed um, quite a bit earlier because I'm not asleep a lot of it. I am preparing for sleep in, in this meditation. So I'm doing that every night. And if you want me to share my, my particular one with you, I'm happy to do that. But there are lots of them out there. And I'm really um, pleased with it so far. So something else that I'm doing that I know is working because it makes me really uncomfortable is uh, mindfulness. So they say that um, we have managed to detach ourselves from our body. And that makes sense, if, especially if you've held trauma for a long time. If you have CPSD, you probably have a lot of health issues as well. I know me personally, I carry a lot of physical pain in my body, not just emotional pain, but I carry a lot of physical pain in my body. So um, we, they say that we have detached ourselves from our body. We're not, we're just, you know, an observer. So there are some exercises like, you know, um, mindfulness exercises, mindfulness meditation, you know, feeling the energy in your feet, feeling, how do you know your feet are there? Feeling the energy in the cells and um, that kind of stuff. Peter Levine talks about a, a tapping or using your pulsating uh, shower head and letting it flow on a piece of your body and saying, this is my hand. This is my hand on my body. This is my hand. This is my body. So if you don't have a, a pulsating shower head, then you could, with a loose wrist, tap yourself. This is my hand. This is the back of my hand. This is the back of my hand connected to my body. This is my body. Even as I do that, like it causes me to have chills. You will be surprised. I was like, oh, I'm not disembodied. It's called, that's what it's called, disembodied. I'm not disembodied. I feel like I'm in my, my body. I can touch myself. I'm, I'm in. But I really recognize that I haven't been. And I, and I figured that part of why I haven't been is because I'm holding the physical pain in my body. So to avoid the physical pain, my, I am outside of my body. So that's one thing I'm doing to try to come into my body. Also, you feel your emotions um, in your physical body before you are consciously aware of them. So when I feel my emotions come up, I talk myself through it. And I had only been doing the negative emotions, fear, anger, um, frustration, but I had an opportunity last night to do it with some good emotions. And it's interesting to see that um, where a, a bad emotion affects you in the body, good emotions could hit you in the same place in the body. Then once I recognize where that, that emotion is manifesting itself in my body, so here's the catch. We need to go through the cycle. So once I identify it, I like to watch it now. This is not me. This, this is Dr. Peter Levine. Watching it, being aware of it as it moves through the body. And doing this will help you get used to the cycle of emotion. Because everything is cyclical in our lives. Our life is even cyclical. So it should form a circle it should it should go ahead and and move through your body energy needs to move through you if we um compounded all that energy we get sick and that's kind of where we're at right now because we're holding the energy from our having that over activated um nervous system so um that's what i'm doing right now yesterday i i had a really a bad emotional day and i forced myself to listen to positive affirmations the entire day while I was at work. And I found it intensely uncomfortable. <laughs> Shocking. It was really, at a couple of times, like things that she said, I wanted to like snatch the earphones out of my ears. So preparing for reunion has been really interesting. Oh, one more thing too. Um, how to help you if you get activated. So anybody who is aware of their trauma knows that they have triggers. And a lot of times when you get activated, you can lose big chunks of your day and your memory and productivity from being activated. So did you know that a good strong hug from somebody will reset that for you. It can actually stop you in the middle of a trigger, like in the middle of a reactive moment. 
So I've actually started hugging myself and I'm also very careful with my self-talk. I've, I've, for a while, for about a year, I've been talking more gently to myself, but I've actually actively started reparenting myself now. So what that means is, you know, sometimes I need to get up and go look at myself in the mirror and it's very difficult. And I'm talking to that inner child that nobody protected. And I'm telling her, it's okay. It's all right. You're safe now. It's okay. And sometimes I hug myself. So get up into a corner and hug yourself so you feel like it's a good... I know it sounds silly, but it really works. It's okay. You're safe. It's okay. And that voice that berates you, be gentle to it too. Because it had a purpose. And its purpose was trying to protect you. So tell it, hey, it's okay. I see you. Thank you. Thank you for trying to protect me, for protecting me for all these years. But we're safe now. It's okay. So I need to get ready to go to work. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. It's hard. It's hard, but it's worth it, guys. Healing from complex trauma is work. If you think you're just going to give it to God or give it to the universe or whatever, or go see a therapist and the therapist is going to ma wave a magic wand or give you a pill to fix this, all they're going to do is treat your symptoms at best. At worst, they're going to make you worse. So <laughs> that's it for today. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Kamina the Coach wishing you love, light, and peace joy. And I'll see you next time. Kamina the coach, I'm out.